Hi, I'm going to trade the DAX and it's late after work. So let's see if we can grab some pips. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers. I am the overgrown child that is the scruffy trader and you'll understand that if you see some of the other videos and tonight I'm kind of carrying on with the after work series just grabbing quick 10 pips maybe 15 if we can to work around a day job and show you how relatively easy it is to be done now I haven't traded much at all today um, simply because I haven't needed to. I've had a stonking start to the week. So all I've been doing today is watching the chart and getting prepared to enter the chart. Because trading is not just clicking the button. It's much more than that. In fact, 80% of what you do is preparation. Then there's about 10% deciding to get in and 10% deciding to get out. And what does that mean? It means you should actually know what your entry and exit is before you click the button and then you just have to manage it. But you also have to have sort of damage control settings in your plan. What does that mean? Well, if the price goes against you, are you going to get out? Are you going to average in? Are you going to take so much of your position off? Because believe it or not, when you average in and you see people scaling out especially myself because I scale a lot and you see you're scaling off your profits you should also scale out your losses because you could get to say halfway to your hard stop and think I think this is wrong but I'm not sh quite really sure why not just take half the position off because if it goes to your hard stop it's not going to cost you as much but likewise if it comes back and goes into profit that bit you left on the table could actually pay off your bad decision because that's what it was in the first place um, well maybe it's not a bad decision or bad trade is maybe the better way to look at it so let's have a look at the chart and it's the DAX that I'm interested in simply because it's had a wonderful run up and it's come back to something that I looked at the other day and I'll show you so if I pull up the DAX bear with me I was looking at this the other day and as you can see if you look at the candle it is the five o'clock candle today sixth and it's now five past five uh, in fact i'll drop it down for five minutes just so you can see that you can see what time i'm taking these trades there it is there 1705 let me drop back to the hour and show you what's going on i had two key levels marked up the other day and it went into it and then slammed straight down here happy days with that now today when I was watching it here it is starting at eight o'clock this morning it has hardly looked back it's just been on a steady run up but look where it's stalling it's stalling where I marked before and this kind of reinforces the theory of self-fulfilling prophecy 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 cause all this trouble yeah i'm sorry i i am a child and that's one of my favorite films believe it or not from being a kid i love the dark crystal it's it's fantastic and i do sit and watch it with my grandkids anyway sorry what i what i'm driving at is the markets do have a memory and they will go back and test levels that's been tested before well you can't say that's never been tested you know one two three four five six seven eight hours 
they've tested that area so this becomes interesting you know and even the one down the bottom is interesting so the plan is I'm going to take it down onto a lower time frame and I'm going to try and work between here and here now I'm going to extend this out just like so because these are what I'm kind of interested in now zones levels candles for that matter are not pit perfect all right you always need to be thinking there or thereabouts in your mind because the market will not go to an exact pip or if you call it to the exact pip you're a lot better than I am but I can normally call it to a rough area and that's kind of what we're looking at here okay so I can see the move up and you can clearly see it there the sellers are coming in you can see that with that tail this candle here is definitely showing you the sellers are in a lot of pressure down the body is in the bottom half but there is a few buyers pushing it back up and that's been seen here but as you can see with the formation of that candle it's not exactly strong so that kind of tells you this move is running out of steam it's running out of puff so it presents a good opportunity to counter the move and grab a retracement now because I'm only looking for 10 15 pips um, it's quite easily done on the DAX and it's kind of something that I show on a regular basis so let's move it down slightly and have a little look further into the equation well there's your move that zone has kind of been respected so it's a half decent target point okay we have this candle here telling you that a lot of sellers have come in but it's stopped it's pushed up that's showing signs of a move down as well take this onto a five minute and oh look at that lovely now it's dropping it's moved back up it's staying in the zone so it's in it and i'm looking to come out of it this way all right so i'm going to do a candle count one two three four five so from the base of there to that line i am happy to get in uh, it, the price is reasonably far away from the fifth candle one two three four five it's seven five it's about 10 ticks away so what we're going to do is i'll put the order underneath this one why do i do a candle count well the candle count is just to give you a basic range of price where you can put a reasonable order in it's not set in stone um, if they were kind of all bunched together and flat I'll be looking at the lowest of the five but when it's kind of defined like this I just kind of look at where I think is good I want to be below this level so kind of under there somewhere all right so let me drop a couple of orders in and we shall see all right so if I go 10 on there so I'm now looking at 82 and do 15 but I want to hold a runner on this So those orders are in what I'm planning on doing is because the market will bounce around a little bit I think there's a reasonable probability it's going to get to the bottom of this zone which will take these orders out but when it retraces back I may put an extra order in to come down to catch this one 
but at the meantime because um, I'm looking to put some money on the table I, I just want to see if it will do the 10 15 pips because believe it or not that's all you need um, it, it, it's part and parcel of sort of plans that I put together and I, I keep in my mind uh, I'll kind of give you an example okay that is there what is this you're looking at so I'm a big believer in compounding and planning your wages now what you can do with this um, it's very simple set yourself goals say you want thirty thousand pounds a year which kind of set in here this will work it out because everything is based on one trade at 20 pips which is there all right so if i want that thirty thousand and i'm doing it once i come down this column till i see that goes to one there you are five pound 96 is the size of your bid and after 48 weeks you will have 30,000 simple stuff right. and that's what I do but also if you want to say a new computer and it's 2,000 pounds you can look at what your current bid size is move it over to there and it will tell you how long it will take to hit that goal and it's just maths but once you've got it in your mind it's easy you know and it takes a lot of temptation away because a lot of the time you think you have to be in the markets all the time you don't this is based on one trade just one you know I might be conservative and think well I'm only gonna get 10 pips per day 50 a week but I still want my computer and it's costing me two thousand pounds I want it in a month well I want it in a month there's 31 days I need to be bidding 655 simple as that and likewise if I want my salary I would need to be at 12 well thick end of 13 pound a pip once a day so this can then work out how many times you need to trade because you might be able to afford 12 pound but you can afford six so that means that's two trades a day 10 pips hope that kind of makes sense and that's kind of how i work things out um i give myself a good target whatever it happens to be drop it onto a wage maker plan like that and then i apply it to the chart very very simple so here we go what what's happening now because we we are trading this in the moment well it's moved up one two three four five so the base of this we could shift this up a little bit now well why is that big boy well it's very very simple look at the candles as long as I am on the other side of them uh, by a reasonable amount that market has to come to me which puts things in my favor you know if I just click buy I am at the mercy of the market straight away and at this moment in time I'm sitting on heat whereas if I let the market come to me as I am doing I am sitting on no heat and the only thing that I'm losing is time and that's where your toys come into play because I have them scattered all around my desk love my toys generally love my toys even my rude toys but, um, that's because I'm an aging child but hey -ho. who said you have to grow up because I certainly don't anyway back to this the rest of your trade when I was telling you earlier on about preparation and hitting the trigger and sort of closing the trigger hey up there's a streaker did you see that 
wandering around with no clothes on. That, that's disgraceful. Whew. We'll have a moment now. Well, hello. Ding dong. That was a good moment. Hold on a second. We'll find out. Hey, Wink. Yeah? I, I've just had a little moment. Oh, is, is that an offer? <laughs> uh, you're not making it reality then? Not today. Not today. No. <sighs> do you know what she said? Rotten cap. She promised that she would do the gold bikini thing for me. The next time we go on holiday. Well, that went up in smoke very quickly this year when we went into lockdown and there was a travel ban into Spain. I think she's got insider knowledge. Maybe she should trade these bloody charts. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, I am, rather than ramble on, I'm just going to leave the chart running. And I'll come back to you later tonight when this is sort of completed. Um, my belief on it is it's going to come down. Uh but I just need to redefine the entry. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, that's exactly what I say it is. I'm going to follow the price up ever so slightly, but I'm not going to be overly aggressive because I don't want to be caught on the wrong side of the move, but I do want to get my 10, 15 pips. So I'll just edge it up, edge it up, uh, where's it at now it's 14 pips away from me so I could easily put that up to there just like so and the bounce of the candle may well get me 10-15 pips uh, in fact I'm pretty sure it will so I'm going to pull that down to there so we're going to move that one to 20 I don't want to be too aggressive with it because at the same time I might get this wrong however the signs are short definitely are short so we shall see in fact that's coming in how far is that I'll come down about 10 pips. I'm just going to edge that ever so slightly. That's about as much as I want to go. Uh, it's been a, a little bit braver because I opened up the target a little bit. Uh, I'm going to leave the runner where it's at and just kind of get as much as I can. But I don't want to run on all night. So regardless of what happens at around 7, 7.30, I'll be looking to shut this down, um, hopefully in a profit, because uh, I don't want it to run overnight. And especially at the moment, because there is a lot of news which has thrown the market left, right and centre. Uh, the FTSE today should have gone down because the country went into lockdown national lockdown uh, supply chains were battered one thing and another yet it's rallied up and kept on going uh, likewise the DAX today so the the moral of that story is be a little bit conservative you know when the markets are unpredictable and erratic you're better off either not trading at all which pretty much is kind of what I've done today because I haven't been able to gauge the markets very well today for all I've been talking to the guys in the Telegram group and nailed some of the moves. They didn't tick my boxes and I have a certain criteria that I have and if all, all of it's not clicked, I will not enter. Um, I will just sit on my hands and play with my toys. Simple as that. And that's what brings consistency for me. Because I am disciplined enough to do that. If I think something is substandard, even though 
I'll analyze it and I could say I potentially think it's going here and it does I still don't worry about it if it's hadn't ticked the boxes because that is just part of my discipline it must follow my rules and my rules are very important to me um, part and parcel of being quite an analytical person I guess it's why I live my life on spreadsheets uh, I, I genuinely do so let me let this run out uh, it is 25 past 5 so I'll go get something to eat and one thing and another and I'll come back to you when this is all over okay Dang do live with that one so what was initially an after work trade has ended up being incredible did pretty much what I said it would do I was only looking for 10 15 pips across some orders uh, easily achieved that it only went 35 pips against me so even if I catastrophically went wrong and it hit the stops it was six six hundred and fifty quid for the hard stop this has pulled in 806 and I've cut it kind of short because it is now just coming on to eight o'clock at night and I'm done for the day uh, a little bit late I wanted to be finished about half past seven but it looked pretty good and I was waiting for the first couple of green candles as soon as I saw them that was it I was just gonna close off the day trade so all in all superb and I hope what I was saying kind of makes a little bit of sense um, the key element to take away I guess from today is the waiting side of what I've done because I've waited pretty much all day I could have traded throughout the day but none of the setups were absolutely solid and I require it to be solid and if I don't see it 
I just won't trade it. I don't mind sitting on a little bit of heat if I truly believe my overall thesis is correct. And the reason why that is, is because like I've said to you before, I don't enter a trade unless I'm pretty sure I'm going to win it. You know, I'm prepared for the worst, but I'm expecting the best. I hope, hope that sort of sounded okay. Um, but yeah, very good, very happy. And I think that's me done for the week, to be honest. Um, don't want to push the boat out anymore. Uh, there's going to be some more news digging around this week. Um, lockdown's a nightmare. Uh, travel bans have just come in, so that's going to affect things. And I think I deserve a couple of days off. So you might see me on the camera, but I'll be on a whiteboard probably. But then again, I am quite addicted to the charts. And the guys in the Telegram group, they often ask me, what do I think of this? What do I think of that? And Muggins here opens his mouth. And I'm a good believer if I preach it, I should do it. And that's why you often see me trade things, just because I said I would. Um, talking of things that I said I would do, uh, something different next week. Uh, I am actually going to be a night owl. I'm going to be trading the Asian session Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Uh, why am I doing it? Well, there's a couple of guys I speak to on a regular basis are on the other side of the planet and they are waking up as I'm going to bed and I just want to help them. So I thought what I'll do is I'll trade the Asian session as if it's a day trade. And I'll see if I can pull my 10, 15 pips at midnight. So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. Uh, so if you keep an eye and you're interested in night owl trading or, or even daytime trading, depending on where you are on the planet, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I'll be looking at markets I don't normally trade. I'll be well out of my comfort zone because it's not something I've ever really ever done. Reason? I live in the UK. My working day finishes at five o'clock. I don't need to get up at midnight to trade the markets. So it's going to be an adventure for me and it'll be interesting to see. So if you've got any thoughts on it, by all means, drop it in the comments below. Uh, you got any preferences to the Asian markets? I'll be very interested because it's not something that I do. Uh, it is very alien to me and definitely out of my comfort zone. So sometimes it's good to push yourself. So talking of pushing, I am going to push off and finish my night uh, enjoying watching The Aviator. Uh, it's a good film, about power shoes. Uh, something different, because normally it's Star Wars, but Winky says that I have to be a little bit more cultured and grow up. Guess who's going to win that battle? <laughs> anyway, as always, do what you love. And money will follow. See you all in the next one.